Hey everyone, my name is Katie Robertson. I'm the founder and director for The Anchor Gathering, and this is The Anchor Moment, and I wanna tell you a little bit about what that is. It's a time we get to hear from a guest, a little bit about their life, their faith journey, and an anchor moment. And that is a time that someone has had their faith grounded and they've seen Jesus for real in their lives. So we are so excited at this time, you get to hear firsthand a personal story from one of our guests, and we hope that you'll be encouraged. Hi, my name is Sarah Lowe, and I'm actually from Gig Harbor, Washington, currently reside in the north end of Tacoma with my husband, Matt, of nearly 10 years, and our four-year-old, and our soon-to-be two-year-old. Um, our four-year-old, Brooks, is our son and daughter, Baylor. That's gonna be two. So really, I would say I encountered Jesus in my own personal way in college uh, through Young Life. I became a Young Life leader. I was raised in the Catholic Church, but really my faith became my own high school, but then college. And it was through the ministry of Young Life that I saw Jesus really come alive and was just so compelled uh, to really give my life away. And that brought my husband and I back to Tacoma unexpectedly to be a part of the ministry of Young Life. Um, and so I was with Young Life professionally for 15 years until recently, and now I'm a stay-at-home mom. Um, and I would say Previous to really walking with the Lord, and even, I would say, in my relationship with Jesus, I always wanted life to be like a mathematical equation. One plus one equals two, two times two equals four, and very linear. And um, many of you may be laughing at that idea of having young children, all the unexpectancies that come your way with becoming parents, but that was really how I viewed life. Through my faith journey, obviously, that has been shown that that isn't reality. Um, and really, as we step into life with Jesus, he promises us joy and fulfillment, but he doesn't promise us an easy trajectory. And we're going to have hard times and loss and pain. A lot of us can resonate with this and the unexpected, having given the recent time of the COVID pandemic. And for many of us, what we knew to be normal, to be ordinary in our day-to-day -day rhythm was thrown into a spiral. Uh, I learned I was pregnant with our second child two days before we went shelter in place as an extrovert and a complete social person. I had no idea what was going to come our way. So I learned that I was pregnant. We had, um, Brooks was in a year and a half at that point. So that pregnancy looked a little different. Obviously doctor's appointments and different things look different as your significant other isn't able to be present with you and you're constantly kind of going, can I do this? Can I do that? I think the Lord was really good at just paving away and creating space for our family during that time uh, leading into really um, this experience I get to share about is my husband had been working in Seattle five days a week since he had moved up from Oregon and that's all we knew. And so he would leave uh, just before 5 a.m. and get home in the evening. COVID gave us the blessing of him being in Tacoma part of the time. And I think as many of us come out of COVID, we can reflect on maybe some things in our life that were gifts. This is one of those, getting to have uh, my husband closer by. Um, when I was about 20 weeks pregnant, uh, I was in my office, had just finished a meeting and started experiencing a lot of pain. And I think I talked myself into this idea that maybe I was dehydrated, although I had a hydro flask next to me, it was completely hydrated. But you know, as women, we want to convince ourselves that it's something completely different. And then I had this thought, am I going into preterm labor? Don't really know much about that, but could that be it? And again, it was COVID, so I was in my office alone at this point. And I thought, okay, well, I, I think maybe I'll just drive myself home. So I got in the car. Um, I don't remember much of the car ride, except I had to pull over, got sick, somehow made it back home, um, came into the house, was, I think, crawling on the kitchen floor to take myself to our bedroom and thought, if I can just have a nap, maybe I'll be okay. And this is where I would say one of God's graces and goodness in our life and the hand of God really showed up. 
my husband, who would never work from home in the ordinary, but because of COVID was working at our kitchen table that day. He said he just heard moaning coming in and was very confused. Found me and um, I think I shouted the words to call our OB. So he did. We went to the ER um, and they checked me in immediately. If any of you uh, had the experience of going to the ER and COVID, I'm so sorry. It just instills a totally different level of fear and unknown in this time. And then you get checked in and it's again, can my spouse stay with me? Um, pregnancy, I feel like just gave a whole different level of sensitivity. I learned that I uh, was having appendicitis. So by the grace of God, it wasn't preterm labor. And I learned at that point that the best time to have an appendicitis if you're pregnant is at 20 weeks. And that has the greatest survival chance for your baby. And so again, that was that moment of like, God, you're so good. You're so faithful. The doctors, we ended up having an EROB that was a believer and kind of given the sensitivity of the situation, she let my husband stay in the room uh, till I went into operating, which again, was not the case in COVID. Um, we had family friends come down from Seattle to take care of our son. Then my husband had to leave and it was like the middle of the night and I was going into surgery and I can just remember waking up and these two nurses were above me. And the first thing I asked is, is she okay? Because I knew I was having a baby girl at the time. And they just assured me that she was. And then they ended up praying over me. And again, just the fact that the Lord put his hand on our family and our daughter at each turning point. And so then I was, you know, wheeled into a room and was by myself, um, which you don't really want to be by yourself in that moment. But I think the Lord was just so tender. And um, it was like those early moments out of surgery. Uh, that was just such a sweet time. Uh, knowing that my daughter was okay and she was safe and God's timing was so good. I think of in Hebrews that I know God will never fail us. He will never leave or forsake us. But again, that doesn't mean that we're promised just a perfect seamless life. And I remind myself that even if this hadn't been my outcome and I didn't get to snuggle Baylor each and every day, that God would still be good and that he would still be faithful and sovereign to me and our family. Um, and so I know that as we reflect on the last couple of years, um, I'm really deeply grateful for how the Lord showed up and really provide coverage over our family. And now we get to have our two beautiful, healthy children out of that. And so um, again, just reminded that even in the midst of the uncertainty, God is so good and He is so faithful.